Uh, my name is Jerry Decker, and I'm going to talk about something that uh, a little group of us have been working on for about two years now. Uh, it's a uh, it's hard to believe, I'll give you that, but you, this, it's based on, partly based on this. This is from, this is from a very old book, and uh, it's basically saying that ether and zero-point energy are the same thing, but they're extremely high frequencies, very short wavelengths. If you take, okay, just as energy can be released from exploding mass, E equals MC squared, you explode the mass to get the energy. It goes back to ether. Just in the exact opposite, you can precipitate ether into mass. And it uses it with a spectrum, just like white lights. You get all the different frequencies, except in this case, you get energy, mass, and everything. So you can see, if you slow down ether to make it longer wavelengths, the next thing you get is magnetism. If you slow that down, you get electricity. If you slow that down, you get light, and then heat, and then sound, the physical vibration, and then matter. And uh, it's an interesting hypothesis because there's a lot of claims of people who do app ports and materialize things and it's just precip you know, precipitation of matter from nothing and it, it's an interesting thing. Anyway, uh, but understand this first and also the fact that each one of these bands is a full spectrum. Just, just as you have white light that generates all the colors, then you'd have magnetism that has many colors, many different frequencies. These nanostructure arrays, when you look at them under a microscope, this is what they look like. This is excreted by the bug in growing its tissues, you know, the, the chitin. That's what it looks like as you, as you go significantly greater magnifications. That's what you see, finer and finer. Look like it's machined. It's almost perfect. Go to the next one, please. This is even a finer magnification. And these are those little resonating cavities that appear to pick up. The lower you go, the higher frequencies, like a straw with a certain frequency, like organ pipes. As the organ pipes change in, in, in length, the frequency goes up. So the deeper you go into mass with these resonating structures, eventually you're going to hit Cater's frequency below infrared terahertz, and you would be able to cancel gravity. So this, that's what all this is leading to, part of it. OK, um, Grubinikov is uh, the man. Uh, this is this is Grubinikov. Uh, he is now 74 years old, but he, the original experiment, he's looking at a microscope. This one particular bug, he won't tell us if it's a beetle, uh, a, uh, uh, a beetle, or a butterfly, or some kind of a wasp. He won't, won't tell the genus of the insect. But he claims he, he had, he had uh, was looking at one little piece of it, a concave, you know, concave, it looks like a, a satellite dish. And he's looking at that under a microscope. It's a chitin plate, chitin, C-H-I-T-I-N. He's looking at it under a microscope, looking at this extremely precise uh, nanostructure array. Well, this, he, this is electron microscope. But in this one, he's looking at these star shapes all on these concave plates. And he happened to take a pair of tweezers and, and he had another one like this and he dragged it across and it jumped out of the tweezers and floated up in the air and fell off to the side. So he thought, I've been working too long. <laughs> so he takes it out from under the microscope he does it again and it floats up out of the air and <laughs> floats back down. So he goes out and kills a bunch of these bugs and rips off their wings. <laughs> and he glues them all to this board, da -da -da -da, like a grid, 10 by 10, something like that. And he sets it where all the cups are facing up. He drops an ink pen on it and the ink pen floats in the air. <laughs> he drops a tack on it and the tack floats in the air. He turns the board upside down and the board floats in the air. It's like, whoa. <laughs> so, uh, and it all sounds like BS, but remember, fluctuations, zero point energy and training, the whole bit. Okay. Uh, he said, the detail broke loose from my tweezers. It hung suspended in the air, and then it fell back. He t ties these panels together, and he makes these panel blocks made out of chitin. Okay. So they're basically little repelling blocks. Okay. Um, array levitation of pin, tack, and other objects. He says, I'm not naming the class to which this insect belongs. It seems on the verge of extinction. He's a big tree hugger. I have no problem with tree huggers. But uh, he's... He, you know, you got to protect as much as you can. And he, he doesn't want to give the name of this because he thinks if this gets out to the world, they'll come in and take every bug they can. I wrote him a letter and I said, look, we don't care about the name of the bug. <laughs> Just send us a two, couple of samples. If we can duplicate the effect, prove it's not electrostatic, it's not electromagnetic, we can make artificial, dis uh, you know, analyze it with an acoustic microscope, I mean a scanning microscope, get the specific dimension, is it hexagonal, you know, tet tetragon, tetragon what? And make it into an array. What is the structure, the size? Is it on angstroms, micrometers, what? And just run off sheets of this stuff. So if you, you made a pair of coveralls with this stuff, you'd float in the air like a big balloon. <laughs> so, oh, it gets better. <laughs> so, uh, uh, see, uh, this is the Twilight Zone version of the whole thing, so I should just quit now, but uh, we're not through. <laughs> There's a lot more. Okay. This is a, uh, my contacts tells me that these two pictures 
All right, th those are called sensile. Uh, th that's, that's wrong, Chuck. Turn it uh, back 90 degrees. Yeah, upside down now. Upside down. There you go. Yeah, those are called sensile. Th those little hairs. And uh, This is uh, Phil... Uh, Phil Callahan, he's an entomologist in Florida, and he, they, they have like little craters and they have a hair inside of it, and the hair, as it vibrates, based on the frequency, it stimulates the, the, the crater, and that's how the insects detect. In fact, their ears, anywhere there's hair, it has these little sensory. Uh, the next one, please. But this, he's telling me these four pictures are from the insect that has this structure. That's what he says, but I don't know if it's true or not. Next one, please. This is uh, uh, from a sample of butterfly wings, and he's showing these, these channels. And you have to go every place. This is Grabenikov holding uh, what all this led to. It looks like a, he's an artist, so he goes out in the country and he takes his paints and stuff. This is like an artist set, and it folds up, you know, so normally it unfolds, and it's got all the palettes and all. Uh, next one, please. So he basically has hand grips. He's got a left hand grip and a right hand grip, clutch cables, like a motorcycle. And notice you got little wing nuts to attach them all. Next one, please. This fits on top of this, and that fits onto the board when it's un unpopped, when it's un the hinges are open, and it's all wing nutted together. No notice, no batteries, no light, no nothing. It's just natural. This box is hollow underneath, by the way. Next one, please. This is uh, Professor Grabenikov. This is the actual stand, what it looks like. So you stand on this thing, and you turn these clutch cables. Next one, please. <laughs> this is Professor Grubinikov standing on this machine, and notice the shadow is directly on the ground. Next one, please. And this is when he's floating off the air, in the air, from these wing structures off these bugs. Totally natural effect. No electricity, no nothing. Uh, next one, please. It took me... <laughs> I've been on this a long time. So when I first saw that, I thought, oh, please. And then, then I went and translated part of the chapter, and, I, and I, I'm reading his stuff about cavity structures, and, and there's, there was a lot more. I, I won't go into all the details, but... It, there were a lot of things that clicked in my head. The, the key to net, that's what we're all about, correlation and networking. So I'm, all these things are popping into my head of, of all these hits. And I said, this is not right. So I told Dan about it, and I told several other people about it. And we've all been corresponding for two years now, uh, trying to collect other information and looking for other things. And we've found tons of stuff, including Maclay. I mean, you know, NASA's on this, but they're on the tip. Uh, this is a, he, he can't use a camera. He says when he's flying on this thing, the, he's got spring-loaded uh, uh, controls, and basically if he takes his hands away, they'll pop and close, and he'll fall. <laughs> so he can't have a camera. The guy only lives on $24 a month. He's real poor. Russia's really bad, really bad. And so he says he can't have a camera when he goes up there, plus the camera doesn't work properly. So because he's an artist, he paints what it looks like when he's flying around on this thing. That's the one painting. <laughs> this is from way high up. This is like 1,000 feet. Go ahead, Chuck. This is coming in through a, through a valley to, going towards a, a, a lake. So next one, please. Now, this could all be fake. <laughs> this is transcendental meditation, what they call yogic flight, where they pop their legs and they jump up the air and take a picture quick, and then, of course, they fall back down. So he might be standing on the platform, and he jumps up, take the picture quick while he's in the air. No, no. Now, I'll show you why. Next check. This is the underside of the platform from the book. Now, if you notice, uh, in the upper, uh, he, he stylizes it. with It doesn't glow and have colors and all like that. But, Chuck, can you pull this piece here? Uh, no, right where your hand is. Move that in the center, please. Okay. You notice all those little veins? Okay. And, and he, he, said, he said, I'm right about this. So uh, in each corner of the box, he went out and he got popsicle sticks, flat popsicle sticks, and he glues 10 of these little cups on top of the popsicle stick. And he's got all these sticks lined up with a common rod, so when he opens it, he's got a Japanese fan. That's what those fans are. In the back, there's... Uh, next one, please. In the, in the, there's the cups, there's the, the popsicle stick, there's the rod holding all the sticks together to form the fan. There's the four fans in the corner of these, this hollow box. One set of clutch, one clutch cable controls the two in the front. The uh, clutch cable on the other side controls the two in the back. When he opens the clutch cable simultaneously, he gets equal lift and he floats up off the ground. 